Hey there folks and friends, Connecting Dots here. It's Wednesday, August 27. Okay, progressing on here with the debunking of the uh, Pacific Ocean being dead. Of course, many of you already know this, but uh, we're not going to stop here because there's outright fraud taking place. I realize some of you are interested in this. You don't care fraud takes place. There's all of us that do care. So if you don't like the videos, you're, you're more than welcome not to watch them. But I will continue on this and I'll continue my reporting on many other topics like, like I have been since 2008. Okay, so the death of the Pacific Ocean. And, and you'll also um, see some uh, shell-shocking facts here uh, regarding lobsters. Now, is the Pacific Ocean dead? No, it's not. And uh, more proof here coming right of where? Laguna Beach. Yeah, right in California. So the story says here is that divers and snorkelers and recreational fishing enthusiasts alike are reporting increasing numbers of fish off the local coastline. And please, please, don't listen to people telling you they're running away from the radiation in the Pacific Ocean. What, have they got Geiger counters strapped to their backs and they know there's radiation? Holy jump, and I can't believe that people actually say that. Or, or here's another one. Um, the, there's no more life left in the Pacific Ocean, so they're all running to the shoreline. <laughs> Trust me, if all the fish in the Pacific Ocean were dead, or even short, a shortage of fish, the price of seafood would skyrocket immediately, your Captain Highliner fish biscuits would more than triple, there would be, they, they talk about it, the, the fishermen are out there every day, this is our livelihood. Trust me, any drops in the stocks, you're hearing about it all the time, folks, but not here. This is not where we're hearing, folks. In fact, this story here tells you that, yeah, it's uh, the best he's seen here, Donna, or she's seen since 1997. Uh, all the links to the stories here I'll show are all down below here. Again, it talks about these, uh, on July 27, these 334 anglers, they went out and, yeah, Great catch. What can I say here? I, I'm not going to report stories telling you that it's the end of the world. In fact, here, I got a couple of good stories as well as a, a not so good story. But the fact is, you got to report it the way it is, and you can't make up stories like telling people that the Pacific Ocean is dead. You know, like I said, now, a Beautiful Girl by Dana's changed the story. It's almost dead. Well, it's not almost dead. It's quite, it, it's doing quite well. So, like I said, uh, uh, it's all linked down below. I can't read this entire story here, and I want to get hit with a copyright uh, infringement, and God knows they're looking for something like that so they can hit me up, take me down with, like they did with my first YouTube channel. But anyways, it goes on to say here, and by the way, I know the kelp is still existent on uh, the Sunshine Coast, which is one of the things I've been asking here, some donations, because I've been offered a... Uh, free boat tour right to uh, Dana's hometown here so I can tour the beach and show everyone all the kelp and how everything is growing and of course things are doing well it's not because there's a lack of food in the ocean no it's because of these warmer waters and no the warmer waters aren't because of climate change I know you're being told all kinds of stuff this is why I've I, I'm I've been doing this stuff here because I've realized there's an agenda that's set here to try and blame us humans and the CO2. Absolute lies. You know, CO2 is the, the building block of life. You take away CO2, there's not going to be any life. In fact, if you go look at the, pra the past uh, charts, the CO2 charts from ice core samples that go back millions, 450 million years ago, we have all kinds of sam uh, sorry ice core sh samples that show that the CO2 levels on Earth were in fact much higher than they are right now. And oddly enough, life on Earth was a much more prosperous back then because of the high CO2 levels. I'm a farmer, I, as I mentioned in my past. I, I've done years of farming. Um, I happen to know that CO2 is good. Uh, I used to own a book put out by the uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture. Uh, a book that was so serious that I've, I wasn't even allowed to have it in my, in my hands. Uh, back in 1985, they would give you a $500 fine if you had this book in your possession. Well, the book was nothing but a bunch of studies showing you that uh, all these different foods that, we, that are in our food chain that they grow commercially were all tested as to what kind of effects would happen if they were hit with higher levels of CO2. Well, guess what? They all did well. That's what I found. The summary of the book was basically a summary of all these researches and it showed nothing but great times. The food chain would prosper, which is what I know. And again, here we're being told that the water is rising, it's getting warm, and it's the end of the world. No, uh, if you go to my Connecting Dots 1 forum, I've talked about how it's actually 
a volcano underneath the Antarctic that's melting up the ice sheet. You're not going to hear that everywhere. You'll have to go to my connecting dots one forum and read it. But again here we're hearing these blue lobsters. One in a million. One in 30 million. How many? I don't know. Is it Fukushima? I don't think so. I doubt it very much. It's not even in the right ocean. Hold on a second, but there could be a case that it might be radiation. But before I get into that, let's see here what kind of history we've had just recently popping up with all kinds of colored lobsters. So this first one you just saw here was just caught recently here by this Miss Megan, okay? And uh, you find out that the uh, lobster is, uh, is going to an aquarium and it's going to be joining three other blue lobsters and an orange one in their tank. <laughs> Seriously. Yes, sir. And um, yeah, just recently here, August 2nd, there was another story of another fisherman catching a rare orange one. No, seriously, you couldn't make this stuff up. So it turns out this, this orange one here was caught on July 23rd by uh, Captain J uh, Josia Beringer, and he discovered a 1.5 pound five year old calico lobster in his trap in the mouth of the Hampton Harbor near Hampshire, New Hampshire. Remember this. But what's really interesting about this that he says, if you go read that article, that he says he's caught five of them, including that one, over the last 14 years. Wow, one in a million. And he's caught five of them in the last 14 years. But he goes on to say that's by far the coolest one. The point is, these things are popping up. And yeah, just just before his story came out, we had another one here in Florida. I mean, her friends call her up and they actually see it in the uh, lobster is in the seafood section. That's right. <laughs> and uh, as you go see here, it goes on to say that it was identified as a calico lobster and it is one in 30 million genetic uh, anomalies. It, uh, is it normal? Is it Fukushima? Is it radiation? I'm not sure. I'm not done yet. Hold on. We're going to show some more stories here and this research here comes out of um, one in a million uh, comes out of you get it the lobster institute so i'll leave a link down below for this pdf file and you can go read the whole thing but they're basically telling you that it's very rare uh, to find these kinds of lobster lobsters the colored ones and it goes on to tell you just how rare they are and uh, well it turns out this uh, yeah the yellow lobster they're estimated to be one in 30 million six times more rare than the blue one. Anyways, the links are down below if you want to go read it up. Now, back on lobsters and crustaceans, well, we have a shortage of blue crabs. So we're finding lots of calico and blue lobsters, but as far as the crabs, well, their numbers have dwindled. They've dropped below the safe level of 70 million. Yeah, that's still quite a few blue crabs, but what's interesting about that is the location of where they are. That's right. So on one hand, we have all these um, calico ones, and on the other hand, we have these other ones that are dying. Is it from overfishing? Not sure. Is it because of just a small, little localized population? Possibly that compounded with fishery. Is it is it the radiation coming from Fukushima? Definitely not. However, when you go search the river, um, you find out that there's nuclear plants up there. No surprise. I mean, um, the U.S. is littered with uh, nuclear plants, unfortunately. And uh, is it something to do with the nuclear plants? I can't prove it. All I know is that in that first study here I showed you in this PDF file, they're saying it's uh, a normal genetic mutation. Okay, can't prove anything. We'd have to go down there and actually pull out these uh, uh, lobsters, uh, the ones that are living, and uh, check them. Other than that, all we have is storylines telling you that it's one in a million, one in a million. Turns out there's a whole bunch just in one summer, so yeah, turns out there's a lot of people fishing crab all of a sudden. I don't know. Okay, here's your 11 lobster facts that will leave you shell-shocked. Yes, they can naturally be blue. And by the way, the reason why I'm posting this story is because I don't want other people taking it and whacking the crap out of it like they did when there was um, blue crabs found in Alaska. 
You've had a lot of people here in the nuclear sector on YouTube just take that story, including Energy News, not even do proper reporting. Don't even tell people that these blue lobsters, uh, sorry, blue crabs in Alaska had been found numerous times in the past. I don't appreciate that. I'm not into fear mongering. I do my stuff for free. Yes, I'm asking for donations now, but that's because I want a gamma spectrometer so I can actually identify the fish here, right here in Vancouver Island, right here in Victoria, where all this radiation is apparently impacting all the seafood. Food. Well, I'm here, and I'm going to be checking it. I'm not going away. I'm staying here. So if you guys want to participate, great. So they keep growing forever. Imagine that. That's right. It, they even say that the, the biggest ones they've caught, it's only because the claw got caught in the entrance of the trap, not inside the trap. So we don't even know what the biggest lobster is out there. Imagine that. They eat each other. That's right. And the females are players. <clears throat> Yeah, players, imagine that. They don't fool around, guys. When they, <clears throat> they're in the moon, they let you know. Okay, so um, they, they taste with their legs, not their tongue, their legs. They chew with their stomachs. The green in cooked lobsters is liver. It's not that poo-poo. Uh, <clears throat> they don't scream in pain when you cook them. <laughs> One of their claws can exert pressure of up to 100 pounds per square inch. They can regenerate limbs. Their shells were once used to make golf balls. Once upon a time, they were to go to prison food. Yeah. Imagine that. You're going to prison, you're going to eat lobster for the rest of your life. Okay, I'm going to finish her up here. Uh, this latest story here comes from... Um, Oh, what's the university? Stanford University here talks about these uh, native mussel, uh, how they're filters, which is one of the things I was talking about here. Because I live on Vancouver Island, I'm surrounded with ocean. I'm roughly about a uh, two, three minute walk away from the ocean myself, where I'm located right now. And because many of you that want your seafood tested, well, great place, send it to, to me, and or I'll test it right here because I'm along these shorelines here. And I've been talking about how the mussels would be a great thing to check because they're filters. So if there's radiation, they'd be the first one showing up dead here or radioactive or, or whatever animals or sea life eats them would turn out to be showing radioactive, which is the reason why I want that gamma spectrometer. We got to check the food chain. That has to be done. We don't need to be driving out in the middle of nowhere to go check the food chain. I'm right here where all the water comes in in Victoria. And sure enough, when I get that gamma spectrometer, we will be checking these clams. Okay, so as I mentioned, this gentleman here in Powell River, right where a beautiful girl by Dana lives, where he claims there's no sea life, has offered me to take me out for free on his own boat. Tour me around. Go check the tidal, way, uh, tidal pools. I got my GoPro camera, as I'd mentioned here. It's, uh, I just need the case here. It's, it's roughly about $60, $65, $75. I need a, one or two spare batteries, a charger, um, one or two uh, SD cards to load up all the beautiful footage. Um, I want to spend, I guess, maybe a night in Powell River. Uh, after that, well, no, I'm not going scuba diving, but I mentioned how there's a YouTuber here by the name of... Uh, Claire Stanhope, who's willing to go snorkeling here on the Sunshine Coast, where beautiful girl by Dana lives. And if you're willing to help out, I'll leave a link down below for the radiation monitoring tour. Donations are accepted, and any extra money is going to go towards this gamma spectrometer. And if you want, if you only want to donate towards a gamma spectrometer, you're allowed to leave a note here when you uh, donate money by PayPal, so you can leave. Please only use funds towards gamma spectrometer. I told me that that's no problem with me, you know, and you're, you can say whatever else you want. And, uh, yeah, thank you very much for donating. And uh, let's share the truth, folks. That's the way I can, uh, that's all I can say, really. we, we got to debunk these liars and stick together as a, a truthful unit. Take care. Hope you enjoy the info. Oh, yes, and one more thing. Uh, because I can't leave comments any on my any of my videos here, I'm censored by Google. I can upload a video, but I can't leave any comments. You can correspond with me here at ConnectingDots1.com or send me an email uh, under uh, the letters CD with the number 1, CD1 at ConnectingDots1.com. Thank you, folks.